The opening scene features a couple of American tourists who visit a local pub in Scotland. As they are looking at some old pictures hanging on the wall, they stumble upon a famous photo of the Loch Ness Monster. An old man sitting nearby tells them that he didn't sign off on them hanging a picture of his dick on the wall. <laughs> and he's upset. But another old man sitting nearby tells them that the photo is fake and there's more to the story. Eager to learn more about it, they join the elderly man to hear the full story. As the old man begins to narrate the tale, the scene cuts to the flashback to the year 1942 during the Second World War. We are introduced to a young boy, Angus McMorrow, who is seen staring at the ocean. He loves the sea but is afraid to approach it because he always imagines himself getting drowned. Angus likes to collect the seashell shells as he used to do that with his father Charles. Being a sailor in the Royal Navy, Charles is currently away from home, serving his country in the war. And as a result, Angus misses him a lot and always counts the days till his return. One day, the boy discovers a large mysterious egg in the sand. While looking at it curiously, he is found by his mother Anne, who asks him to come back home. He then puts the egg in his bucket and accompanies his mother to their manor house on Loch Ness. As soon as they arrive, Angus rushes to his father's garden shed to hide the mysterious egg. He then washes it and starts peeling off its top layer, revealing a shiny blue-colored layer beneath it. But before he can break it further, his mom calls him, prompting him to leave the egg there and run for dinner. Later that night, a strong rainstorm causes the shed's door to start banging. Angus goes to shut the door, only to discover that the egg has hatched. Just then, he hears a movement, prompting him to follow the sound. He soon finds a strange, alien-like creature that has emerged from the egg. As he tries tries to touch it, the creature almost bites him out of fear. Thinking that it needs something to eat, Angus grabs a potato from the kitchen and peels it to feed the creature. This allows him to gain its trust, which makes the creature more friendly. However, Angus is unable to spend more time with his new pet as he hears his mother calling and has to return back to bed. The following morning, Angus wakes up to see a parade of military vehicles arriving in front of their house. Believing that Charles has returned, Angus, his sister Christy, and their mother eagerly rush out. However, However, they're greeted by Captain Thomas Hamilton, who reveals that the Royal Air Force has been tasked to defend against the potential German U-boats, whom they speculate might try to invade the country via the sea route. The captain further informs Anne that all the soldiers will be staying in the manor house, which leaves her in shock. She asserts that she doesn't have enough helpers in the house, but he says that his men can do all the work. As the soldiers set up camp in the house, Angus realizes that they pose a threat to his new pet. He rushes to the shed, only to find that the creature has messed up the entire place. It's been speedrunning puberty. Seeing the creature biting his father's shoes, Angus learns that it's hungry, so he runs towards the kitchen to get something to eat. However, the army cook, Sergeant Strunk, refuses to let him inside the kitchen. As an alternative, the boy grabs a garbage can and drags it to the shed. The creature immediately dives into it and begins feeding on the leftovers. Amidst this, Angus decides to name the pet Crusoe. He then goes through an animal book to figure out what kind of creature it is, but none of the possibilities make sense. After Crusoe finishes eating, Angus tries to touch its skin but finds that it's very dry and in need of water. As a result, he submerges it in water, after which the creature starts playing happily. The next day, under Captain Hamilton's command, the soldiers establish an artillery battery on a nearby hill to counter the threat of German U-boats that have been found roaming in nearby waters. Back in the manor, Anne enters the shed to find the place in total disarray. While looking around, a handyman named Louis Mowbray shows up. She then tasks him with cleaning up the mess and emptying the place. Anne also tells him that she suspects Angus is keeping a pet in the shed, something which he isn't allowed to do. Afterwards, Angus finds Louis emptying the garbage can, freaking him out. Concerned for Crusoe's safety, he hastily looks for it, but fails to find it. The boy then fights with Lewis to protect his father's shed. However, the latter claims that the shed belongs to him until Angus's father returns from the war. As night falls, Angus grabs a flashlight and begins searching for his pet. Meanwhile, Crusoe enters the manor and starts wandering around. It soon crosses paths with Strunk's dog, Churchill, who instantly begins chasing it. Thankfully, the dog is chained, allowing Crusoe to narrowly evade capture. Elsewhere, Angus 
Angus gives up on his search, thinking that he's lost his pet. But as soon as he returns home, he hears his sister scream, prompting him to rush to her room. There, he finds Crusoe playing in her bathtub. He stops Christy from shouting, assuring that it poses no threat. He then confides everything in her, and also requests her to keep it hidden from their mother. On the following day, Anne goes to Lewis to offer him some clothes belonging to her husband. The handyman politely declines, saying that Charlie will need them when he returns. In a shocking turn of events, Anne reveals that he's never coming back, as his ship was sunk in the war a year ago, and that he's been presumed missing ever since. She also expresses concern over Angus's struggle to accept his father's potential demise. Apart from all this, she asks him to fix a plumbing problem in one of the manor's bathrooms, coincidentally the same one where the kids are hiding Crusoe. Later, Lewis knocks on Christie's door, and the siblings try to stop him from coming in, but when he says he'll report them to Anne, she reluctantly opens the door. Upon seeing Crusoe in the bathroom, Lewis is momentarily startled, but soon identifies it as a water horse, a rare creature from Celtic folklore. He further explains its characteristics. It's a genderless creature that lays only one egg and dies before it hatches. Their conversation is suddenly interrupted when Anne knocks on the door. The siblings plead for Lewis's help to hide Crusoe. While they walk out to buy some time, the suspicious Anne walks in anyway, but finds nothing amiss. Turns out that Lewis has cleverly hidden Crusoe in the toilet, and it freaking loves it. Sometime later, Anne runs into Captain Hamilton, who invites her to a feast organized by his fellow soldiers as a gesture of appreciation. Meanwhile, Lewis advises Angus to release the growing water horse into the sea, believing it to be the creature's natural habitat. However, the boy refuses, insisting that the best place for Crusoe is with him. That night, Anne joins the soldiers for dinner, while Angus and Christie play with Crusoe. Shortly after, they head out for some work, accidentally leaving the door open. This allows the mischievous water horse to crawl out of the bathtub. Churchill smells something unusual, prompting him to follow its source. Not long after, he tracks down Crusoe and chases it around the house, causing chaos. The sound of this commotion alerts the siblings and Lewis, who then rush to find Crusoe. The chase soon breaks into the dining hall, with Churchill recklessly running across the table. Fortunately, Crusoe manages to escape without being seen. The creature makes its way outside and dives into a fountain full of fish. Lewis instructs Angus to go back to his room, as his mother is very angry about what just happened. The boy refuses at first, but when Lewis promises to find Crusoe, he obliges. At dawn, Lewis locates Crusoe, which has now become much bigger in size. He quickly awakens Angus and brings him down to take a look, making him realize that it can't be contained in the manor anymore. As a result, they load the creature on the truck, drive towards the sea, and release it into the water. When Lewis returns back to his shed, he finds Captain Hamilton waiting for him there. The captain orders him to stay away from Angus, proclaiming him to be a bad influence. However, the handyman remains unfazed. In the next scene, we see two fishermen, Jimmy and Huey, fishing in the sea. A short while later, they accidentally hook the water horse that has now become even bigger. Despite being terrified, Huey still wants to catch the creature as it would bring them a lot of money. However, Crusoe, with its great strength, starts pulling their boat away at high speed. In a desperate bid to save themselves, Jimmy cuts off the fishing line, allowing the creature to swim away. On the other hand, Captain Hamilton takes Angus under his wing and pledges to turn him into a disciplined soldier, but after a few days of training, the boy gets so tired of his oppressive military life that he runs towards the seashore to meet Crusoe. When he doesn't see it, he boards a boat and paddles himself around. A while later, Crusoe reveals himself as a now full-grown water horse, shocking Angus for a moment. The boy then jumps onto its back, and even though he's frightened at first, he eventually eventually begins enjoying the ride around the sea. The water horse also takes him underwater, drowning him instantly. <laughs> Just kidding. Making the adventure even more thrilling, this ultimately enables the boy to overcome his fear of the water and his need to breathe, apparently. As they return back to the shore, Churchill, who is on a walk with the sergeant, smells Crusoe and runs towards the same. Angus hurriedly asks his pet to hide underwater, but it's too late as Strunk spots it from a distance. Later that night, Angus shares his adventure with Christy and Lewis. They all laugh and seem to be enjoying themselves. Anna 
overhears them and peeps through the door. When Lewis spots her, he walks out to talk to her. She thanks him for making the kids happy, because it's been a long time since she saw them smile. Unbeknownst to them, they're being watched by the captain, who doesn't seem happy at all. Meanwhile, in a local pub, Jimmy and Huey narrate their encounter to a reporter named Jock. Hearing this, the reporter believes that this news can bring tourists flocking to the town, but Huey is against the idea. Why'd you tell the reporter then, Huey? The next day, Jimmy and Jock arrive at the shoreline to capture a picture of the creature. Meanwhile, Captain Hamilton takes Anne and her kids to see the work they've been doing so far. Upon arrival at the hill, the captain showcases their weaponry intended for use against potential threats. He then orders a demonstration of firepower, alarming Angus, who fears for Crusoe's safety. He and Christy beg their mother to tell them to stop it, but the latter doesn't understand what they're saying and asks them to stay quiet. The cannons are fired into the water, many of them almost hitting the water horse. When the boy can't take it anymore, he finally intervenes, causing the soldiers to stop. Unfortunately, this enrages the captain, so he sends the family back home. On the other hand, Jimmy and Jock are also upset, thinking that the creature will never resurface after the bombardment. Despite this, they decide to stage a fake photo of the creature to print in the newspaper. Days later, Strunk reads the newspaper and identifies the monster as what he saw earlier. When he shares this with the fellow soldiers, they vow to hunt it down. Lewis comes to learn about the sergeant's plan and alerts Angus about the same. That night, the two of them rush to the shore and call for Crusoe. The water horse emerges, but it seems to be angry due to the earlier bombardment. As a result, it almost bites off the boy's hand. F you, Angus. I thought you were cool. Before retreating into the water. In the meantime, the sergeant and his soldiers set sail in quest of the creature. They soon hear the barking sound of Churchill from one part of the shore. As they approach it, they're suddenly ambushed by the giant Crusoe. The soldiers immediately open fire, and the creature retaliates by flipping the boat upside down. One of the soldiers manages to send an SOS to Captain Hamilton, believing that they're attacked by Germans. The captain orders all of his soldiers to fight back. He also asks Anne to keep her children safe, but they soon learn that Angus isn't home. This causes them to panic, so they rush to the shoreline to rescue him. At the shore, Crusoe goes rogue and is on the verge of eating Strunk. Angus shows up in the nick of time and tries to stop his pet. When it doesn't listen, the boy wades into the water, but he accidentally slips and falls unconscious. Seeing this, Crusoe dives under the water and brings him out. Lewis then performs emergency CPR and somehow resuscitates him. As soon as Angus opens his eyes, he sees his pet in a normal state, which makes him very happy. Not long after, Anne and the captain arrive at the scene, prompting Crusoe to retreat underwater. Angus attempts to explain everything to his mother, but she remains skeptical and instead accuses Lewis of putting nonsense into her son's head. Right then, Crusoe reveals itself, leaving Anne and the captain in utter shock. As Angus goes close to pet the creature, the soldiers from the other side of the shore begin firing cannons in the water. This prompts the boy to climb onto Crusoe and lead it away. His terrified mother frantically asks the captain, to stop the gunfire, but their attempts are hindered by a damaged radio channel due to rainy weather. Left with no options, the captain, Anne, and Lewis board a boat to go after Angus. Meanwhile, the soldiers mistake the creature for an enemy submarine, so they draw a huge net to ensnare it. This forces Angus and Crusoe to come to a stop, unsure of their next move. Soon after, the captain, Anne, and Lewis catch up and implore Angus to let go of his beloved pet. The boy is torn apart between his family and and Crusoe, as he loves both of them dearly. But in the end, he reluctantly bids farewell to his faithful companion and swims back to his family. Crusoe then goes underwater and gets an extra boost to jump over the net, bringing the military equipment down. As it escapes the place, Angus and the others delightfully cheer from a distance. In the present time, the old man explains that some claim to have spotted the water horse in subsequent years, but Angus never saw it again. Moved by the story, the tourists thank the man and ask for his name. With a serious expression, he replies, Angus McMorrow. Outside the pub, a mother calls out to her son William, who is seen walking down the beach. The boy spots a large rock-shaped egg, which has an iridescent blue shell, just like Crusoe's. This indicates that Crusoe has left a descendant behind to carry on its legacy as the next water horse. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.